So one of Gaelic football's greatest ever players has hung up his boots for the final time. Mark O'Shea was a five-time inter-county All-Ireland winner with Kerry, but for the last couple of years, just been focusing on the club on Gale Tuck Down in Kerry. But he finished up within the last couple of weeks, played the full hours on Gale Tuck Fell to Dingle in Sunday's West Kerry Championship semi-final, his last game for the club. Evening, Mark. Good evening, Nathan. How are you? Not too bad. You're only 38. I'd say they would have expected another few years out of you yet. Uh, wrong side of 38 I'm afraid um, but look I suppose it was it was great I really enjoyed my years with the girls took, um, had some fantastic years but unfortunately I suppose living in Tralee and just a few niggly injuries this year and that and just the time I suppose getting back there um, an hour back two hours behind there and an hour home it's it's <clears throat> it's nearly as Intense as intercounty, you know, at this stage. Right. But uh, I have to say, though, it was, it was fantastic. And we had a great year last year. Whilst we didn't win the, the All Ireland Intermediate, we, we got as far as the semi final, and it was a great learning curve for our lads. And, uh, you know, a young team coming up there. They're, um, some of these lads have won Pubble Skull, with, uh, won All Ireland's with Pubble Skull Kirk Agrina. So, fantastic young players coming through. And it was great to play with these young lads. And because, you know, I suppose. I was lucky enough to have won senior county cham- championships at the Gaelic, and I was the young fella breaking onto that team. So it was great to be the older fella and, and watching these young fellas break onto the team. Yeah, and I guess a really important thing as well for those younger players who probably hear and may remember when they were young lads themselves going along to those county championship victories that it is possible, it is still possible even in spite of, I'm sure, the many problems that are there for on Gaeltuck at the moment in terms of, of keeping young players at the club, that it is possible for a club like that to go and achieve something. Oh, it is. And, you know, I suppose crop of player comes around. It doesn't happen uh, every year, but a crop of player, players comes around every now and again. And that's the way it has happened now for this current team. We've, we went so close to going down to Division 4 a few years ago and luckily stayed in, th- in three and came came straight up to two and up to one and lucky enough to play in the co- county league final against Crokes last year, the top two teams playing the final. So things have changed for us and the young team is coming through. And as you said, it is a slog though, you know, particularly ha- having a rural a rural mm. team. And um, <clears throat> I suppose with with uh, my giant manager, Conal O'Croolia, who was absolutely outstanding and you know, he's, he just his attention to detail with everything was outstanding, and I, there's no way I could have played as well only for Connell, you know. So he he was outstanding. But the one thing that the two of us did set out at the start of the year was to try and make sure we had a strong panel of players because going to training every night, you need at least thirty players that you can that you can work with. You can you can work on things in training, and I suppose that that was one thing that we found challenging and demanding because you've injuries and you've people mm. working in particularly during the summer months and the new fellas going away to America. So that was a huge challenge. And But, you know, it was very enjoyable at the same time and very rewarding because whilst, you know, we, we were missing players, we were still getting results. And, and then that's the most important thing. And, um, you know, but the thing about it is, Nathan, it's not just our club. This has happened throughout the country yeah. with all the rural clubs. And then you go to county championship games and you look at the likes of Dingle and Cairns Rally, Stax, Dr. Crokes, all these teams, and there's 30, 35 players in their panel. So I suppose the the, the town clubs, they're, they're, um, they have plenty of bodies, but the rural clubs are certainly suffering. Yeah, it's just to carry on, I guess, from the inter-county game where we have more and more people moving to the cities, which benefits bigger counties. And here, as you say, for the club game, the bigger towns are just getting stronger and stronger. Having had the couple of years just back solely focused on the club then and, and looking at the issues for a club like on Gaeltucht and West Kerry and in rural Ireland and with Darrow Canada on talking about it and the problems with immigration, does it seem like a very different place to when you were starting out 21, 22 years ago? Yeah, probably does. I suppose lads are maybe more focused on their careers now. Uh, football is what brought people together back then, but I suppose people are looking at the bigger picture. Um, maybe the recession had something to do with that a few years ago, but certainly, I mean, there's even players, you know, the likes of Ron Anna Flaherty, who played at me, won, won a couple of All-Irelands, and he's, he's off in America. You've, you've players in, in Australia from our club team, and, you know, they're, they're just... Um, they're just uh, going about their their lives, and and you know they, they have, their lives. They have to do that, and, and I suppose it is the club that that suffers ultimately. But at the end of the day, the club gives so much, and it's the people back there who keep going, keep doing, 
all the the, the, the the work that has to be mm-hmm. done at grassroots, whether it be the lotto or fundraising for, for, for pitches or whatever it may be. And as I say, Nathan, these people are in every club and you see them particularly I see them in Kerry and 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 I know they're in every other county because you know if you're if, if you're going away presenting medals you see these people and and you know that's that's what epitomizes the GA that's what it's about and uh, I, I think that once we have these people at the grassroots uh, we're in a very healthy position I remember talking to your brother Tomas a couple of years ago when Nemo Rangers were on a bit of a run and he was talking about the, the difference between inter-county life and club life and only now realising how difficult it is for a club player in terms of the calendar and not knowing when games are going to take place and that as an inter-county player you have to be a little bit selfish. You simply don't have time to think about what's going on with your club and the difficulties there are with players leaving all the time. Having had those couple of years, what's your take on where the club scene is right now? I uh, like it's 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 totally different to the intercounty scene. The, the intercounty scene, you're in a bubble. You know when you're playing, you know when you're training. The club scene, you don't know when your your championship games are on. Okay, fair enough, they brought in the month of April as, as the, uh, solely for the club month, but we saw counties that weren't adhering to the, to the rules. And, you know, I think the GA have handed on some, some form of punishment now, but, um, you know, everyone needs to buy into this for, for this to be a success. Um, it's, it certainly needs to come from the top down, whereby the, the GA are, 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 you know, using the, the, the resources to make sure that the 32 counties of Ireland are adhering to the systems that are put in place. And I don't think that's happening at the moment. And look, it's very difficult for the club player because club player can't can't book holidays because there might be games coming on and also wait for county teams to either um, get get to finals or get knocked out. And if they get knocked out, you know that you're you're out in the next week or two. So from that point of view, it's it's very hard for the club player to try and organise stuff and, and, and because... You know, he doesn't know when 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 uh, when games are going to be put on. So that's that is a big drawback. So I think from the G, and then I suppose for the intercounty player, the uh, the other side of that is there's no close season because when you're finished with your county, you're back playing mm-hmm. with your club. Uh, you know, I know intercounty players who are still still playing club football, and they'll be back training with their county uh, very shortly. So so I think that's wrong. You know, and it's, it, it leads to burnouts and all of that. I mean, the, the big issue that I have, Nathan, is that the club scene, uh, the, 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 the Leinster, the Munster, the Connacht and the Ulster club championships will be played before Christmas. Yet it takes two months and 17 days to play two games, mm-hmm. which I think is a farce. Um, and wh- what I've noticed as well with, with, say, for example, down here is that if, if the likes of a Dr. Croke's team advances to the All-Ireland Club final on St. Paddy's Day, you know, most of the National League is finished at that stage. So if there is a player from a club uh, doing well with his team, he's not going to get much of an opportunity to, uh, on a, for a run-out with his inter-county team because the, the National League is nearly over. The, the, the manager will have his team close enough to his 15 uh, team in his head and he's not really going to upset the apple cart and I think that you know it, so it's the club player that's playing and that's advancing that's suffering there as well so I think that you know fair enough the, the, the GA have gone about their business well and they've introduced the, the month of April as the month for the clubs but I think they need to go a step further now and I think that they need to you know Make the the season shorter for, for the for the clubs. Mm. Why can't these All Ireland Club finals, junior, intermediate, senior? Why can't they be finished before Christmas? There's no reason why they can't. We we see the the improvements in pitches um, in the last few years, and I think there's no reason why these competitions can't be finished before Christmas. Yeah, I think uh, most people would definitely be in agreement with you on that. The last game then against Dingle, bowing out of the West Kerry Championship, like I presume, did you know it was the end in those final few minutes? Are you, are you looking around thinking, bloody hell, this is it? Yeah, well, look, it, uh, you see, I suppose last year, or, uh, last year we, 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 we played and we got as far as the All-Ireland semi-final, which kind of broke into this year, January, February, and lost the All-Ireland semi-final to my and then we kind of, uh, you know, you couldn't, it was, the, that was February, and then the club championship was April. So you couldn't be really walking out then at that yeah. stage. Uh, the body was, was kind of, 
uh, trying to talk to me as well. My shoulder was giving me awful bother. I was getting injections into my shoulder. And, and I suppose when you're getting things like that, the enjoyment is going out of it a small bit. And I suppose I was very lucky throughout my career, Nathan, with injuries. Um, was blessed that I didn't have as much injuries as other people. And, and that certainly stands to you because you can see people when they get injured, they're, you know, uh, they're, they're up on the table, they're getting physio, they're not out in the field where the enjoyment is. And even to get out in the field and do two back-to-back ses- sessions this year was a struggle for me. So when that happens, the enjoyment has gone out of it. So I knew that whenever the West Kerry Championship was over for yeah. me, whether we win it or we were knocked out, you know, I was I was bowing out because, as I say, I'm living in Tralee. It's an hour, two hours back there, another hour. That's four hours of your life gone three times a week. So look, from that point of view, I knew this was the end. And you know what? We went down fighting against England. We beat them last year. They, they they probably had the bit between their teeth to get back at us this year, uh, you know. And we definitely put it up to them because they got a penalty late on, and, and and they went on to win it then. And uh, you know, more luck to them. But uh, I I know that our lads will be back again. There's, there's a young team there, and uh, I just felt the time was right to go. Yeah, the, the O'Shea name is like it's probably the greatest footballing dynasty there's been at inter county level. Never mind at your own club. Are there any more of them left? Is there still a few involved in the squad? There is, yeah. There's Potty, son, Potty Oak. He's still involved. He's, he was our captain this year and playing very well for us. And um, he'll keep going. He's he's running the bar back in Ventry and Art of Oher and he's uh, doing a good job at it. And he's, um, you know, he's he's plenty years left in him now in the Great Cup jersey. So he's he's keeping the flag flying for us now. And Fergal, Fergal has two young fellas back there. They're playing underage football. And um, you know they're they're flying as well, and he's a little girl as well. So they love the thing with the girl. Uh, unfortunately, Tomas is down in 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 yeah. New Cork. Oh. Um, Darren and myself are in Tralee, so it looks as if Fergal and and and, and Padraig will be flying the flag for us. Yeah, what's the plan now? Then I'd, I'd hate to think you'd have too much time in your hands. I don't. I look. I'm I'm training the school team in in the green, Tralee CBS, and enjoying that. We're in the Carnivory. Um, so you know, we'll, we'll, I'm enjoying that as I as I say, and it's it's challenging, particularly with young fellas. But you know, it's very enjoyable brand of football with young lads. They they they're great lads. <clears throat> so you know, I, I'll take it as, as as it comes. You know, I've nothing planned yet, um, but certainly, I suppose I would be interested in management. There's no doubt about that. But you know, something something right would have to come along. You know, as I say. With the club scene, it's it's very hard because, you know, it's it's challenging, mm. demanding because you don't have players at your disposal. So I mean, you know, that's not to say I wouldn't get them involved with a club, or you know, we'll see what happens down, down uh, come the next few years with maybe underage teams or whatever. But uh, yeah, look, football is where my heart is, and it's it's what I look forward to doing, watching games, going to games, um, and you know what, we'll we'll see where it, where it brings us. Yeah, have you spoken with Peter Keane about what his plans are for the next couple of years? No, I haven't. Uh, you know, Peter is is just after taking charge now, and he's he's a big challenge ahead of him now, trying to topple the dubs. Um, it's it's it'll be a huge challenge, but he's got great young players coming through. Um, and the big question is, will they be ready for 2019? I think they'll certainly challenge. But I think Peter needs time now to uh, get his house in order. You know, he's just after taking charge. He has a good management team in place with Tommy and Morris. James Foley and, and, and of course Donny Buckley so you know he's great fellas with him and mm. I've no doubt that he, he'll he uh, hopefully bring back the glory days because I think the talent is there but I think they do need time Yeah there's clearly they're clearly doing a lot right still in Kerry with the amount of success there's been at minor level in recent years when, when you look at the young players then you're looking after at schools level and you're thinking about going into coaching Like, what are, what are the one or two key things that you bring in do you still feel there's very much a Kerry way or is that starting to integrate what other coaches are doing around the country and and the way maybe the Dublin are setting up like are, are you always eyes open trying to pull in the best info from everywhere yeah well I, I suppose we're very lucky in Kerry in that we have a development officer in Donald Daly who's doing a great job and I think you know we've we've seen the fruits uh, he's borne the fruits from that with the, the, the all the minor successes with Jack O'Connor's team and Peter Keane's team so I think that we're doing an awful lot right down here with our development squads and you know we've our new centre of excellence open now which can only help us and you know but I suppose 
you, you you think about the fundamentals, the basics, the skills, the game, and thankfully the players that have been produced in the last few years, be it from Public Skull, Cork Green, or the Sam and Killarney who've gone on to, to win the Hogan Cup success in our own school in, in the Green Tree CBS. And looking at these young fellas, um, you know, the, the the important thing I think I think is the emphasis on the skills. Uh, I've always that's always been my mantra. Obviously, you have to develop. You look at the intercounty footballer now, as opposed to maybe twenty years ago. The intercounty footballer now is like uh, is like a rugby player, and I suppose that you know that that comes with the the game that is there now. And as players go from minor to senior, they're developing, and and we do we see a different footballer now. But the, you know, you go back to the basics. Why are Dublin so good? They have the strength, uh, you know, in depth in, the, in their squad. Obviously. They have big, strong, physical players, but they have players that can play too. They're skillful players, you know, and they can play in any position. They're adaptable to maybe defence or attack, and that's a great thing to have in a squad. And I think, you know, once once you have players that can play football, you have a great chance. Mark, great stuff. Lots of well-wishers coming your way. You were guest of honour a few years ago at the Galway Club Dream Team Awards. Complete gent, say Paul, and the team down there. You're free for all awards nights now, I'd imagine. Ah, sure. Open ticket now, Nathan. Cash only. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, we'll talk to you soon. Good luck. Thanks a lot, Nathan.